name is Matt Lischke, Senior Ag Advisor with Local Land Services. Welcome to the second video in the Farming Forecaster series. In this video, we will be taking a close look at the probe data, which is a key feature of the Farming Forecaster tool. Now, it's important to note that the information shown throughout this video is taken from June 2020. So it's just a snapshot of a point in time for demonstration purposes. So while the data that you're about to see will obviously change over time, the methods and principles around how to read and interpret the information stays the same. So when you are looking at the Farming Forecaster home screen, which is what we're looking at here, all of the probe information that is coming out of the paddock, so all the probe information data is all located in the top left-hand corner under the probe heading. At each of the probe sites, um, and this drop-down list over in the, the right-hand side shows all the, the probe sites in alphabetical order. Um, and we're, we're, in this example, we're looking at WIO, uh, which is near Crookwell. But for all the probe sites, uh, there's three measurements that are recorded um, and displayed here. There's soil moisture, soil temperature, uh, and, and rainfall. It's also just worth noting though that um, there are some locations that don't have a, a moisture probe. Um, so Tarauga, for example, um, Tarauga is one of the locations in this drop down menu um, where you've still got your pasture forecasts in the top right hand corner there. Uh, we still have the, the local weather forecasts, but there's no probe data. No probe data will be displayed, um, and that's because there is a, there isn't actually a probe uh, located at this particular site, and therefore that top left hand corner will always be blank. But just going back to the the Wio example now, so uh, moisture probes um, measure both soil moisture and temperature at various depths down the profile, and measurements. Can uh, measurements are taken at 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100 centimeters. And you'll notice that we've only um, we only sort of display on farming forecast to the top 60 centimeters. And so the reason being there is even though the probes go down to a meter, it's really the top 60 centimeters that drives plant growth. So moisture deeper down is beyond 60 centimetres is, is important for plant survival, but it's really the top 60 centimetres that drives production. These moisture sensors, which are located at these different depths, uh, they take multiple readings daily. And the probe, the sensors just spit out a number. And the only way that we can interpret that number is to compare the current reading at each sensor level um, compare the current reading with previous uh, measurements to get a relative reading um, for today. So if the number, if the percentage number is is 100%, and we're seeing that in this case um, at 20 and 40 centimetres, if the number is, uh, it gets up to 100%, what that means is that the soil at this particular depth has reached uh, what we call field capacity. So it's fully wetted up. If the percentage number is zero, what that means is that the soil is obviously extremely dry and is equal to the driest reading that's been recorded so far. Um, and that typically occurs during late summer uh, or, or early autumn. And plants or pasture growth will stop growing well before these probe readings reach zero. So if we look at this site, um, what's it saying? It's indicating that the top 40 centimetres is basically sitting at field capacity. So it's it's fully wetted up below 40 centimetres. So if we look down at 60 centimetres, we can see that soil moisture drops off quite a bit. But overall, soil moisture in that top 60 centimetres is, is very good. 
um, especially for this time of the year, which is you know, start of winter. The colour coding that's, that's applied to these numbers is essentially a traffic light system. Um, so not, if the moisture percentage numbers are 75% or greater, they will appear as a, as a green um, with some green shading. If the percentage numbers sit somewhere between 25 and 75%, they will be uh, amber. And if we have, if these numbers start falling below 25%, the, the shading will then turn to red, which is obviously indicating very dry conditions. So if we, to give you an example, um, if we go to uh, another probe site on the, uh, the eastern side of Goulburn, um, where it's been, which, which hasn't received as much rain um, and been a lot, a lot drier, um, we can see that, well, as you can, as you can see here, the moisture percentage numbers we're not getting any, any green shading. Um, the profile is, is quite a bit drier, and we're also, you know, seeing down at 60 centimetres, um, a bit like the previous example, a drier subsoil. Um, but we're starting to get some red shading appearing there as well. So there's that's just what what it looks like um, once you start getting down to those those lower levels. So just going back to our, our previous uh, site at Weo. Um, so yeah, the percentage numbers provide, uh, or percentage readings provide information on the amount of, amount of soil moisture in the profile right now. And underneath the probe heading, um, it'll actually tell you when this information was last updated. So it was updated uh, about an hour ago. So it's, it's essentially real time data. Um, and then underneath the change heading, just off to the right hand side, you'll, you'll notice that there's some, some arrows here um, and some other, other numbers. And what, what this is telling us is, you know, how does the overall top 60 centimetres compare to various points in time? So we can see at this site that the overall moisture in the top 60 centimetres hasn't really changed much in the last week or even in the last month. So in other words, the amount of moisture that's come into the system from rainfall is roughly equal to the amount of moisture that's been lost from the system through plant growth and evaporation. So we've got very little net change um, over the last week or, or month. However, if we look at the year on year comparison, we can see that there's actually been uh, quite a considerable improvement in soil moisture compared to this time last year. So this side, it's up 36% um, as, we, as we start winter. So that, that's quite a big improvement. Under the soil moisture data, there's, uh, there's also a heading with rainfall um, and, and, and soil temperature. So all probe sites have an automatic rain gauge in the form of a rain bucket. And any recent rainfall will be shown on the home page here um, under the soil moisture percentage numbers. So we've got rainfall since 9am, um, yesterday's rainfall. And we'll also get a reading here of soil temperature um, at 10 centimetres. So that's, that's the summary of information on the home page. Below that, there are two buttons, view network, which we'll have a look at the end. And there's also a button here that says more probe details. So if we click on this more probe details button, it'll pull up uh, another screen. And again, we're still on the WEO site. At the top of the page, we have some extra information and details about the site, including annual rainfall, um, altitude, soil type, and uh, what the pasture type is as well, where this probe is located. Off to the right, again, we're seeing these moisture percentage readings and, and, the, and how it's changed over time. So this is just exactly the same information as what we were looking at on the home screen. And as we scroll down, we start to pick up some additional information. So the first graph on this page under probe history 
is a is what we call a stack graph and shows how moisture has changed over time. Whereas, you know, the percentage numbers are just telling us or giving us a snapshot of soil moisture right now. The probe history graph shows us how it's actually changed over time. So it gives us a bit more information. By default, this graph always shows us the last 12 months. So today is right over on the far right hand side. And if you hover your cursor over the graph, you'll notice that the date pops up and, uh, and the moisture percentage readings for each of the depths. So the red, um, the red band is the 10 centimetre layer. The green band in this graph is, is the 20 centimetre layer. Um, 40 centimetres is, is the orange band and 60 centimetres is the blue band. And the thickness of those bands are indicating the amount of moisture available at each level. So from this graph, you can see, if we look back in time a little bit, you can see, um, you know, this real, this real rapid drawdown in soil moisture in uh, last spring. And then we had a fairly dry uh, December to January period through here. And then we had a, a big spike in soil moisture in early February, where about 90 millimetres was recorded over three days, which really sort of kicked things off. And after that initial rainfall event, you can see that we've also had a number of um, follow up rainfall events, which have really sort of topped up the system. And if you click on this show rainfall box, you can see across the bottom there where the the blue the blue bars are indicating where we've had some rainfall and one of the things this year in on the tablelands is that it's not just been a great start to the year in terms of rainfall but the timing of the rainfall has been it really has been ideal and you can see in this graph that you know this this was the initial big spike in rainfall in in mid feb and and soil moisture and then just as you know, the, the soil moisture was starting to be used up by the plants. We had another another good sort of follow-up bit of rain and then a drawdown in moisture, followed by another top-up. Um, we've had this sort of sawtooth effect. And we can see here that soil moisture has just continued to build and build throughout autumn. So this is the sort of information uh, and detail that you get from this stack graph. Uh, the other thing worth noting is we can use this drop down menu to compare to the previous year, which you can, um, you know, just compare and contrast um, trends in, in soil moisture. If we compare to the previous year, um, so the far right hand side is the is right now or today. And if we go back, if we go to the, the next graph down, um, directly underneath on the far right hand side is this time last year. And you can just see there straight away by the thickness of those bands, you know, how different this, this autumn has been um, compared to uh, 2019. Um, 2019, there was some really good rainfall in late March, early April, but unfortunately, lack of follow-up rainfall just meant that things dried out quite considerably um, and that momentum was lost, um, whereas this year, it's been quite a different story. That's the, the probe history graphs. Moving a bit further down the page, this page also displays the rainfall data that's coming in from each of the probe sites. And as previously mentioned, rainfall is, is automatically uh, recorded using a tipping bucket rain gauge. Rainfall is displayed here in two ways. We've got a bar graph. Um, and then underneath that, a, a, a rainfall chart. And both of these these graphs are, or the graph and the, the rainfall chart are automatically updated when a rain event occurs. So if we, if we just look at the bar graph initially, um, again, this is always the default is the last 12 months and shows how the monthly totals compare with a long-term average being uh, a 30-year average. And that 30-year average is, is a rolling average um, for the last 30 full calendar years. So at the moment, that 30-year average is based on 1990 
uh, through to 2019 and is based on the silo gridded data for the location that we're looking at. So if we look at this, this graph, um, straight away we can see, you know, 2019 being a drought year and um, pretty much all these months through here was, was below average rainfall, notably October, um, was, was a real uh, exceptionally dry October. And then we can also see on the far right hand side, you know, there's quite a big turnaround in, in conditions with the blue bars are now starting to really, you know, well and truly exceed the, uh, the long-term average, particularly in, in February and April. So, so the bar graph there gives you a, an overview of, of um, yeah, monthly rainfall totals compared to history. Um, and we've also got over here some, some rainfall to date for this month and um, some statistics also on rainfall in the last 12 months and how that compares to the, the long-term average. Uh, moving down the page, this is the rainfall chart. And um, yeah, this is automatically populated as, as rain events occur. And you can see here all these little 0.2 mil, all these little 0.2s uh, is where the tipping bucket is picking up dew, uh, dew events. And the shadings, we've got some red and, and green shading applied as well. And that's just picking up the more significant daily rainfall totals. So anything above 10 millimetres in a day is red and anything that's, any event that's been over 20 mils in the, in the day is highlighted in green. So it just helps you to visually see where the, the bigger, more, um, you know, the bigger rainfall events have occurred. And um, down the bottom, we've got some monthly totals, which automatically, um, you know, uh, update and some year to date totals as well. The other thing with the rainfall uh, chart is you can use this drop down menu here to select different years. Um, you can go back up to sort of two years to see, um, you know, what, what sort of rainfall was received at, at each of the sites. The final graph on, on this page is soil temperature. Uh, like soil moisture, soil temperature is also recorded at the various uh, depths down the profile. And the temperature display is a, is a 12 noon measurement. And the soil temperature can be quite useful to know, especially when sowing various crops and pasture species that are temperature sensitive. So by default, the graph shows soil temp at the uh, 10, 20, 40, and 60 centimetre levels. And um, like a lot of graphs on Farming Forecaster, you can actually uh, click on these checkboxes if you um, if you want to turn off certain layers. So if you just if you're just interested in the 10 centimetre layer, you can turn these off. Um, again, the soil temperature graph is always the last 12 months. Um, and we can just sort of see this steady decline in soil temperature, as you would expect, uh, heading towards uh, heading towards winter. And again, a bit like the um, the rainfall uh, or the other graphs on this page, you can you can look at uh, you know the previous twelve months if you wanted to compare um, you know the last twelve months soil temperature readings compared to the previous twelve months. If you scroll down to the very bottom of this page, there's um, you'll find some additional details about the site. So it's a description of the, the property and the enterprises run. Probably the, the most, you know, one of the one of the real key things down here to have a look at is is this is the soils in this soil area and there's some really good information down here about the soil where the probe's located. This information was obtained in the field and we did this by digging a hole, um, a one metre hole near the probe and doing a full profile characterisation. So we've got some photos here of, of the profile from zero centimetres top here, going down to, going down to um, 45 centimetres and then from 45 to 90. And we've got some, some really good information here about about what this saw is actually like and um, a table below which shows you um, 
uh, how you know how deep the different sort of uh, horizons are. So it gives you and it gives you an indication of soil soil depth and how the soil texture changes with depth as well. And one of the major things that this project has really highlighted over the years is is the impact of soil type. Obviously, rainfall is an essential ingredient in growing grass, but soil type and depth uh, will largely determine your capacity to capture and store and utilise moisture for plant growth. So for probe sites that you're interested in, in monitoring and, and using as a bit of a reference point for your own property, you know, it's really important to, when you hop onto farming forecasts for, for those particular sites, just to have a have a um, a close look at the soils information and think about how it might compare to your place. So if, if, if you're looking at this for an example, we can see that the soil at Weo is a is largely a silty loam, silty loam sort of topsoil sitting over a, a light sort of clay subsoil. So this soil actually has you know quite good soil depth uh, and the clay content throughout means it has you know you have quite good soil moisture holding properties in contrast if we were to go uh, roughly 30 kilometers due south to the gunning site you can see that we we're dealing with quite a different soil so i've just circled here the the top soil um it's the top sort of 25 to 30 or 25 to 35 centimeters um, and what you can see here is that you know, Weo is this, this loam, the silty loam topsoil. Whereas if you look at gunning, uh, the gunning soil is, is more of a sandy loam. Um, so the gunning soils are much lighter soil and would be um, the gunning soil being a, a lighter texture is essentially a smaller bucket, um, if you like, and, and isn't able to store as much water uh, and will dry out quicker. So when looking at the, the moisture probe readings, again, just it's important to have a look at the soil type and think about how it compares to your soils at home. If the site closest to you um, is, is radically different in terms of soil type, you know, it's important to make a note of that and perhaps look further afield at some of the other probe sites to see if there are other probes that are a bit more closely matched with your soil. Don't just pick the, the closest one to you. All right, so we'll just move back to the home page, and which you, which you can do up the top here. And the last thing I wanted to do was just have a look at the view network button. So back at the home screen now, and this view network button, what this button does is it brings up a, a map of the region and the colored pins, oh, sorry, the colored dots or the colored pins are where the probes are located throughout the throughout the southeast region. And we're using the same traffic light system here too, which you can see in this bit of a legend off to the right hand side. So the colored, if, if the pins are green, it means that the top 60 centimeters as a as an overall percentage is, is above 75%. So you know very good moisture, um, quite wet sort of conditions. If the pins are amber, it means that the top 60 centimetres is sitting somewhere between 25 and 75%. And if the pins are red, it means that uh, what's indicating that we've got a very dry soil um, and, and numbers and an, an overall number of less than 25%. So you can use, um, you know, you can use your the mouse to, to grab and, and, and zoom in and, and focus on areas of interest. So you can move that around. Um, and if we, if we sort of zoom out a little bit, just, just as an example, you'll see here that, you know, we've got quite good soil moisture up in this part of the world. Um, yeah, um, but you can see here as we look down, um, onto the Monero, it's a very different story. Um, and unfortunately, the Monero got some really good rain early in the season, but um, just haven't been able to get that important follow-up rainfall. And unfortunately, 
um, down on the Monero, we're seeing a lot of uh, red coloured pins, which is indicating a, a very dry, um, dry profile. So, you know, this this regional map is quite good to look at sort of overall soil moisture trends and how things are varying across the region. And lastly, you can you can there's a few things up here. So if you click on this show numbers box, it'll pull up the actual percentage numbers. So we're now looking at the, the percentage readings for the total top 60 centimetres. So we've got some sites here that are showing very good soil moisture. Um, and you can also use this drop down menu to you know, pick up different layers. So if you just wanted to look at oh, what's, what's the 10 centimetre layer doing, you can do that. Um, so you can you can pick out um, layers of interest, um, and it's also worth noting that using this menu, you can also um, look at rainfall. So you can look at rainfall since 9am uh, or rainfall yesterday. That can be quite useful to get a a good overview of of how different areas have scored for rainfall once a once a, um, a front's got, got, gone through, and you can also use this rainfall month to date. Click on you can click on rain for month to date to get a again an overview of of how rainfall varies or has varied across um across the month and and some totals there. So yeah, that's the that's the probe network map. So thank you for for watching uh, this video and for further information on other parts of the farming forecaster tool, please refer to the other videos in the series. Thank you.